1589. You know, 1589 was a dive that I was on with um, Josh Tudorinko and Trevor. How do you know that? Huh? How yeah, do you know how that? How do you know that? It was in the 1500, in the late 1500s. No, that that was you know? ONC from 2017. Mm. I don't know. Rennie hmm. has an affinity for numbers. Do you? <laughs> I have an infinity for numbers. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah, okay, that's good. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. All right, it was all set up for that joke. <laughs> Uh, AJ, yes. what's the purpose of this dive? I'm going to find that out. I'm going right. to sure I'm not lying. What are we, what are well, we doing? Well, yeah, we're going to be, are we gonna be doing? swapping a CTD, which is kind of uh, pretty typical maintenance for Ocean Networks Canada. CTDs have a tendency to um, <coughs> drift in terms of their data quality. So we swap those pretty often. I would say on either one or two year cycles, depending on how the data looks. So what do you mean? They like, the longer they're, they're down there, the less accurate they are? Yeah, that's right. They sort of, the, the values or the baseline that you see kind of wanders in a direction. And so it's nice having the ROV go down because it'll have its own CTD. 16, 30 meters. Um, and I'm then you can sort of get, calibrating. Like we know that the Look CTD that. sort of started off calibrated and then it became less calibrated and then I think they can take those two measurements in order to like correct the data. But the longer you leave it, the harder that is to do or the less accurate it is to do. One of these. Do we know why that happens? Sandwich. Is it just getting sloshed around by the ocean? Like I think that the nice. scientists yeah. and the C T D manufacturers know why. I do not know why. <laughs> Maybe Sean, do you know why? Not especially, no. No. I think like the Seabird C T Ds that we use are a real like oceanographic standard. Like everybody 1640 meters CTDs, slowing down but they're pumped ctds and so they're like running little pumps and they have um these little chemical pucks to help control biofouling and um yeah. i think there's just those things run out biofouling Bi can't be biofouling managed could be a entirely big part, yeah. so that's sort of i think contributes to their yeah sure we have shallow water ctds made by other manufacturers like aml oceanographic is a victoria local CTD manufacturing company. They don't do deep water stuff? Um, they might. We don't use the uh, deep water, typically. Okay. Like, we run them on our BC ferry systems. We run them on a lot of our community observatories, our community fishers program. Uh, those are, like, non-pumped CTDs. They use a, a di very different mechanism. Cool. Uh, and they t so they, I think they tend to let drift less. Are we getting dialed in here? Getting dialed in, yeah. Maybe yep. not 100% sure. Gotcha. Okay, what else is happening on this dive? We're also 1650 uh, meters. I'm going to start the vertical video transect now. Thank you, ROV. We're okay. also um, swapping a broadband seismometer, which is part of our earthquake early warning system. Um, I think this broadband seismometer went in last year, but is not working. So we're swapping it for a working one. And that is quite a process, correct? Yeah, so... Switch out a seismometer? These seismometers that are able to detect uh, frequencies in a broad band of spectrum, I guess, spectra, uh, are... Uh, Kevlar. Yeah, we want them to be as coupled to the Earth as we can get them. So what we need to do is bury them in the, hmm? in the sediment. And what the way that we do that is by... Digging a hole or vacuuming out a hole in the seafloor and inserting a case on, which is just like a big tube, like a big like a sewer tube. pipe, like a sewer pipe, yeah. And then we use a vacuum on the ROV to to clear it out, and then we'll put the instrument in it, and then we'll cover it in bead bags. And these bead, yeah, these, well, we cover it in beads because yeah, we'll open the bags, and the beads will come out. And these beads are actually commercially used, I guess, in the oil and gas industry as as lubricants. They allow sort of I guess metal parts to slide on one another because they kind of act just like ball bearings. But they're also yeah, used yeah. for this purpose because I think they have a very similar um, sort of density and behavior as the sediment around them. So instead of us having to sort of like gather dirt from one part of the ocean and move it in and around right. the instrument, nice. we can sort of do it in a more controlled way with the beat bags themselves, which is just glass. Yeah, Josh was describing some of this process uh, at breakfast to me, and he was like, yeah, it takes a while to uh, 
dig a hole and it get this sorted it on the seafloor. Well, it's don't, faster now, isn't it? I don't it? know. Yeah, I don't know what was going on before, but we now come prepared with our own Venturi adductor for the ROV, and I believe that has made the process faster. I think we've had really good luck with it. Um, I think before they were just running essentially a similar system, but like without, it was just like at pipes in a T. I don't know, Trevor, do you know what they were up to? Who's they? You. ROV. Yeah. We had a pipe in a T like shape. I don't know. It kind of angled in and it yeah. blasted water. And so you were you were trying to use the sort of that venturi effect, but you weren't. It wasn't like a proper calibrated venturi adductor part. Well, it was. It's a part we got from the uh, minerals industry. From I want to say it's a. Uh, I don't know what the term is. I'm sorry. The gold panning river. Extraction oh, industry. Is this, stuff? Is yeah. this what Danny was trying to sell me on this morning? It's like a dredge pump used for golds? Uh, the pump itself is the same suction as our suction pump. It's just the mechanism that blasts water and creates that vacuum, similar yeah. to your adductor. It's just a different style of adductor. Oh, okay. Well, it seems like ours is faster now. Yep. I think the one that you're talking about, I think Danny showed me a picture of it this morning, and he was pretty hyped about it. We had a fast it. year. There was, a, there was like one or one, the first couple iterations that we did it on Herc, it was like pretty slow, but then I think we we have something that worked really well. Okay. Yeah, I'm hoping that's this adductor. This adductor works great. Josh, um, I pulled up <coughs> Tau 1589. It was in Strata, Georgia, in case you were wondering. Oh, man. Wow. It was an uh, incredible up, memory. But, uh, <laughs> 300 <laughs> dives ago. It is amazing. 400. 300? Attempted to creep up to the Delta node, but visibility was very poor. That's Sounds about right. That doesn't sound... Hey, it's straight to Georgia. Did I already? Do we already bring up the fact that back then, I, like I've got demoted a lot since then. Back yeah, we, then, tr Trevor was the. Yeah. And you were, and I was, but yeah. now it's all. Yep. Ed was there. Ed was still Ed. Yep. Yeah. Ed's Ed's maintained. Yeah. I think what back then you could you still were able to finish your sentences. What year was this? Twenty seventeen. Don't feel the need anymore. Wow. That was six years ago, and nothing's changed? No, everything's changed. Everything's changed. Everything's changed for Trevor and Josh. They've switched roles. Yep. Sorry to interrupt Tedarenko's uh, pity party, but <laughs> I have more questions. <laughs> 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 what else are we doing on this dive? We're not just replacing the seismometer. Other things are happening, too. Uh, that's news to me. The oh, CTD before, the before we get to that, um, Ed on the beach gave us a proper answer about the CTD. Oh, yeah. Drifting. Oh, cool. Oh, nice. Yeah. Know. Please share. Yeah, beach man. So let's see what he has to say here. Says yeah, there are a bunch man. of fail points, but the most important are blockages in the pump line. So the biofouling or sediment that gets in there. And uh, the, s the sensors will also drift. Um, yeah, it's difficult to quantify it. Um, how much of that and over what time scale. So there's a whole lot more to it, th but that's the basics. Yeah. Right on. Thank you, Ed. Uh, we may be recovering a two-element hydrophone array. What? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Did and a BBS and a CTD? The a hydrophone ar array will come up on the hook. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. I don't care about that. Yeah. What? It's in the dive plan, Trevor. Did you read it? Well, you told me not to read the dive plan because the CTD wasn't in there. It is in there now. Oh, oh it's in there now. now. he's fixed it. Now you should read it. Now yeah, should yeah. obviously. Yeah. The dive started. What are you doing? Resume. I'm uh, doing a vertical video transect at what 10.0 meters per minute. For science. For science. Yeah. Um, yeah, I believe this is just an old opportunity hydrophone array that has what failed. Um, again, yeah, we're just here, so we might as well oh, yeah. pick it up. Mm -hmm. Well, it's only opportunistic. Yep. And we're going to swap our larval Go ahead, traps, bridge. otherwise known as our LRTs. Sure. Thank you. You're going to adjust heading 15 degrees to starboard. 15 to starboard, roger. Which may actually move Atalanta in this scenario because it's not at the aft of the ship. 
Roger. That's okay, though. Hey, Dave. Grop. 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 It's pronounced. That's a good name. Grop. 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 So you skip the U, kind of. Grop. Well, it's there. So you just gotta. You just really gotta. Me? You gotta go through it quick. You gotta though. fly past the U. Yeah. Yeah. Grop. Grop. Orcus. Grop Orcus. Who's who's naming this stuff? Grop Orcus. Grop Orcus. Is that the name of one of the ONC dogs? What thing? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a good one though. My dog's name is Grop Orcus. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, I get a dog. Dogs with last names are great. Let's see. Get like a sunrise out there. Do, 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 do. Hey. Jeff told me there was Orcus and Borcus. Do you know what that's about, AJ? What's the Borcus? I don't. It, honestly, if it's coming from Jeb, he could just be yanking your chain. Yeah, could be. Borcus? Yeah. I don't know. Back the on Borcus SPL. and the Borcus. I'll look it up, though, because, I mean, they are named Gralp. I wouldn't put the past them. Gralp. Hey, Trevor. Hey, Marty. Can I ask you a quick random you question may. from a viewer? Um, what is the big blue box thing in the ROV garage? Oh, here, I can put that out on the set three. Oh. I don't Since know the answer to that because I can't think of a big yeah, it's Oh, the I know one exactly. It's going to pull it up. It has buttons, the hydro. No, I think. No, it's. Uh, yeah, the hydraulic thing. Yeah. Oh. That. Oh. Oh. Yeah. H HPU deck yeah. pack. Yeah. Yeah. What is H that? HPU deck pack. What's the HPU deck stand deck for? Pack. Larval something? Yeah, larval, larval. Um, it's. <laughs> <laughs> Hydraulic power unit, HPU, that is the auxiliary one we run on deck so as to not run the high voltage one on Hercules while doing deck checks and porch rigging. So the vehicle itself has a built-in one, but it runs at 2,400 volts. It's just a lot, of, a lot of electrons going through that we don't need to do if we aren't in the ocean. So we connect the auxiliary one, plumb it into Hercules, and run all the hydraulic functions that way. Have you ever thought about pumping the hydraulics right down to Herc? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Jeez. We have thought about it. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Trevor. <laughs> 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 All right. Our next question is how long will this dive be? And uh, I think it's safe to say it'll be 20 to 24 hours. AJ, do you want it's more info on why I wouldn't do that? Why we wouldn't pump the hydraulics down to Hercules? No, that's okay. <laughs> I guess you need a really big <laughs> pump. Well, just so much line loss is the actual mechanical Not engineering ocean reason. pressure? No. Oh, interesting. But you could just bump up the jams. Bump up the jams. So exactly. you'd have to have uh, so much pressure on the top end to, for the line loss? For the line loss and Same for the ocean voltage, pressure. Right, guess, and the pressure, yeah. 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 It's the yeah. same way your voltage is. Yeah. How Same long way. is your how uh, long is your winch line? Seven seven thousand meters. Uh, that's like that's like four thousand meters too long. No, no. For your purposes. Yeah, for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is like I mean, once we leave, like, what does the ship even do? <laughs> exactly. Uh, little Hercules can go down to six thousand meters. So, so can Atalanta. So can Atalanta. Yep. I've never met Little Hercules. Is he a lot like Big Hercules? Nope. Oh. smaller. Yeah, you put wouldn't top. expect it, but it's actually smaller. Oh, yeah. interesting. Isn't um, Hercule, uh, Big Hercules uh, dived up 4,500 meters, right? 4,000. 4, oh, 4,000. It's all based on limitations of individual pieces of equipment and parts of the ROV. So the syntactic is the driver uh, there for Hercules, which is 4,000, right? That's and right. On <coughs> Little Hercules, it's 6,000, but there's also some other pieces on Big Hercules that can't go to 6,000. The main um, telemetry bottle is one of them. The main there's bottle. A, couple other things. Um, a lot of important things, a lot of essential the parts. Octans? That's Octans, 6,000. 6,000. Yeah. The, the USBL, 6,000, or 7,000. What do you think the frame's rated to? <laughs> I don't know. I think it's a 6,000 meter frame. I think it could be even deeper. Maybe. No way to know. No, not with this tactic.
What other bottles are there that wouldn't be rated? Ethernet? I'm not sure. That might be a 6K bottle. Yeah. I don't remember. Yeah. Tolling cameras, maybe? Maybe. I don't know. I think they're 6K. Zeus is. Zeus is, yeah. Mini Zeus probably is. Mini Zeus probably is. What about uh, all Mini Zeus is, yeah, little cameras, like the bubble, cam. oh, yeah. bubble cam? Bubble cam. Bubble cams, do we have one 6K and one 3K? Oh, wow. Oh. 3K, that's a gotcha. That's a gotcha cam. The one on the vehicle right now is the 3K. Three, yeah. Pushing it. Don't forget. Don't forget. What about Danny Cam 180? Oh. Is that still on there? Yep. yep. You get like three minutes of use out of it before it overheats. It's been on the whole dive? No. It was really glitching the other day. It, it really struggles with uh, really bright versus really dark. Uh, There's nothing that we put on Argus or at Atlanta that is 4,000 that we yeah. have to take off. Is that correct? Argus uh, has a sub-bottom profiler. Oh, is that only 4,000? Yes. I think that was, there's one thing on an Argus, two things on Argus that are 4,000 meter. I think yeah. it was a sub-bottom profiler and one other thing. One of the cameras, maybe? No. Down cam. The lead, maybe. Yeah. Depth rated lead. We gotta get the depth rated lead. We got it sitting in the back of Josh's truck right now. Yeah. These are really close. Yeah. Let's see what the USPL says about it. Okay. Thirteen meters off. Hmm. Nice. What happens if I put the depth aiding on? The problem is so the depth aiding it actually has a depth sensor on it, a pressure sensor. Oh cool. But it's like it's like ACOMS. It sends information, and so if if you were in battery mode, it would use your battery twice as fast. Mm. Um, so we don't typically because we don't use the USB-L depth, we don't really even leave it on just in case for some reason we had to go to battery mode and it was right sure faster because we usually have a pretty high rate of pinging. But when was your last SVP done? Um, so we typically on descent we use the uh, we have a, s a sound velocity sensor and a sea chest on the sh on the hull. We use that and then a bulk mean. Um, and then when we get to the bottom, we have the entire Herc CCD cast that gets turned over and turned into an SVP, and we load it in at the bottom. Okay. But for the most part, it doesn't change X Y at all because we're mostly at Nader. Um, it's just depth will change yeah. by a few tens of meters or something like that yeah. at this at these steps. Depth dating for Atalanta. Sensor. Sensor. Apply. apply. It's neither apply and undo are the same direction. Let's see how that depth changes. Might take a second to figure it out, figure itself out. Or it might not really do that well in aiding. Because hmm. I don't really see a change. Do you have to stop pinging it and start pinging it again? I wouldn't think so. Okay. I can though. No. See no change. Hey, we're going to be on bottom early. Maybe that's why I don't use the, another reason why I don't use this. When we were setting it up, we went through, you know, testing everything and it was like, okay, no, don't use that. And that was could be one of the reasons is it's not really helpful. Right. 
So yeah, with getting to the bottom, what's the what's the plan and how? I I heard we're doing two vertical profiling things. Is we're that on right? the second one right now. Yeah, we did one of the. Oh, top you've already meters. you've already finished the first one. Yeah, and then we're now in the bottom thousand meter vertical video transect. We had 660 meters in the middle. Where were you able to go at warp speed? Yeah. Yeah, so we'll definitely be on the bottom before 11. Yeah. ETA of about 47 minutes. So, yeah, 11.30. And 10.30, sorry. Didn't know what time it was in the real world. UTC. We got a question asking if we saw, if we have seen anything interesting in the water column during this descent. Did y'all see I anything saw, cool before I got here? Uh, I saw some force. like dismembered fish jaws just floating around. That was pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> saw some tinafores, some siphonophores, some snot housings, whatever you call them. We saw a glimpse of what we thought was a shark when we were coming up last night, right? Turned out to be a fish. Oh, it was a fish. I missed fish. it. A really big one. Shark fish. Fat fish. Yeah, some sort. it was wide. Yeah. It's a thick fish. Another question about how deep we're going. We are going to 2,660 meters. And we are currently at 1,850. That's right. 45 minutes. And we'll do some setup at the bottom, some orienting and figuring out where we are in relation to the instruments down here. Randy, you ever do orienteering? You mean like out in the field? <laughs> or a forest or whatever? Uh, Yeah, properly, like once or twice when I was younger, but not in a while. It's a really good skill for backcountry yeah, the compass stuff. map, triangulating. Not even out just where like the are. navigation stuff, but like the orienteering, not the races, but the competitions. No, never a competition or anything like that. <laughs> Probably be good at that, being a navigator and all. My uh, my original map and compass teacher was just really harsh. Uh, I don't know. Seems to just have affected you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Turn him off now forever. Yeah. Although I just reconnected with him on uh, LinkedIn. Hmm. Ready? Have you ever navigated uh, for a rally car driver? No, but that would be so cool. But I feel like I would prefer driving it. Hmm. What does that say about you as a person? You gotta drive it. What does that say about you as a navigator? <laughs> Not a very good one, I guess. <laughs> I, the amount of faith that they must have in their buddy in the driver's seat is right. crazy. Like, uh, yeah, I've seen videos of, of so that. Nervous. And like just, just their watching um, the driver cam on that. They just got their I have a shipmate blah, 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 who blah, blah, blah. Was a, uh, is a rally car nav Whoa. and uh, just wrecked like a month ago oh, and no. did fine. And the driver was like, this is why I pay all that money for safety gear in my rig because they were completely protected. They were old. Wow. Yeah, Crazy. I've seen like the side by side videos where you see like what is happening yeah. fr like, yeah. from the outside point of view, and then what's happening inside is like they're and completely. Colin on, on was face. still a little <laughs> sore afterwards, but uh, the what seemed was? okay. The guy I know, Colin. Oh, okay. He was a undergrad at UW. He's probably like forty now, but wow. Um, yeah, but no, I've never driven or navved for a rally car. That'd be cool. We should get a rally car navigator to take your job for a day. Oh, man. they That would be so intense. It would really ratchet up the intensity. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Turn to the left. Turn to the left. Turn to the left. <laughs> 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 Calm down. It takes a while. We got a question about how the ROV is connected to the ship. Uh, Trevor, do you want to explain how the tether works uh -huh, like a little bit? Sure, yeah. Atalanta is connected directly to the ship with a 6.8 is what we call it. That's a 0.681 of an inch diameter armored cable. 
with some electrical conductors for our high voltage electrical and fiber optics for our communications and control. From Atlanta, we go down to Hercules. They are connected by a yellow soft tether, similarly has electrical conductors and fiber optics. Both of them are extremely strong, able to lift the vehicles vertically up and down with a bunch of room for safety margin. Textbook answer. Thanks. Well done. The 6 8 is the one that we were referencing earlier that is 7,000 meters, and then we currently have a 50 meter long yellow tether, soft tether. Um, but normally we operate with a 30 meter tether, and in, I think in some low heave environments, they and wanted, you know, for good shots, they were as low as 20 back in like Black Sea days. Randy, do you know what the strength member is in the tether? Uh, is it that white fiber, fibrous yeah. thing that goes around the football thing? That, or not football, you know, it locks it in the... The football's on the 6.8, but the... Not the football, in a, yeah. In a double cone The thing. double cone, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's Do you like know what it is? Do I know what it's made of? Yeah. Kevlar. Nope. Don't know. Spectra. 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 Yeah. That's Burned a cool thing. Hey, you up. fish. Yeah. Call back. We. And the 6.8 is extra improved plow steel. Isn't there the some kind of like um, membrane in there that's got a bit of, what's that oh. there? Yikes. Oops. Oof. Is that you? No, that's my buddy Colin. Uh. Wild. Soft bee, buddy. Yeah, those cages are pretty special, eh? Yeah. Um. Trevor, isn't there com some kind of membrane in that? I guess it changes. I know that there's been conversations before about different types and brands and iterations of these 6-8 cables and how they're arranged and where the fiber is and what there's like a sheath of some kind of special material sometimes. I don't know what, what where we're at with the 7,000 meter one. Like the cross section of it, you know what I mean? Oh. Yeah. I don't know. The only thing that has the additional protection around it is the steel tube for the fibers. Mm. I don't remember and if not this all of them have it. Yeah. The biggest one is through. No, that doesn't. I don't remember what this I one seem has. to remember one time, it was like a couple, a few years back, we had a more experimental design, like with the internals. Yeah, yes. I think that was uh, Huey-inspired design. Yeah. We have an experimental one waiting for us in San Pedro. That's a four element instead of a three element. Yeah. Oh. How long? 7,000, I believe. What do we, <coughs> is that the kind of thing where we wholesale change over to it? I mean, I guess we kind of have to have the other one nearby in case it doesn't work out yeah. as expected. Pretty much, yeah. So. I don't remember which one we have on right now. I should know that, I can figure it out. Got a couple more good questions from viewers. Um, I was actually wondering this too. Why was the choice made to use Atalanta over Argus? Smaller. It's a couple lighter. reasons. Yeah. Yeah, it's small and light. We're using Atalanta for the entire season, right? That's the plan, yeah, as of now. Subject is, to change without notice. Is Argus just going to get retired? What's the. Argus is still functional and is currently in spare state. So if we need it for some reason, then we have it on standby. There's, uh, yeah, one of the things that we're looking for, especially on deeper dives, uh, really all dives, but it manifests on deeper dives, is the tension on the, that we're, the strain that we're putting on the 6-8 cable. And it, um, there's kind of working lo load limits. If you have high heave and heavy weight at the bottom, um, you could potentially, at certain uh, tensions damage the fiber or power, but most likely the fiber and the internal. Uh, so we want to avoid that. We do have we do have readouts of that and a way of seeing w and, and limits and working limits um, for those. But Atalanta seems to provide uh, less tension on those heavy heaves, so that's one of the reasons. Also, working with it on deck, um, you know, it's kind of a tight space there, and. Uh, oh. Getting At Atalanta on deck is a much easier, uh, safer for everyone. 
situation. This is what our cross section is right now. Yeah, we are using the four element on here. I thought the four element was in LA, but oh, I guess okay. I'm wrong. Four element is currently on. Power, power, wait. Power, 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 power fiber. Four, fiber and then the four elements in there. Four fibers are in there. Yeah, yeah. What, is, what is this? Those are filler. Filler. Yeah, and then there's the three layers of the yeah. power steel. Do you need to change out the slip ring when you change out the cable? No. We have a three pass slip ring, a three and a spare. Oh yeah, Dan four. was talking about that. He was mentioning that the four was not installed, I think. That's right, that's, yeah. That's we've, run, task. we've had four, we've had a three pass slip ring historically forever, and we bought a new spare. So we decided to use that opportunity to upgrade to a fourth pass. Right. So usually we only use two passes, AKA two fibers going through our slip ring, one for Herc, one for Atalanta, uh, one spare one in case something breaks down, or possibly expansion for science, since scientists come out and want right, to have so their equipment connected. We've got the EHD and everything all coming up a single fiber? That's correct, yeah. So all Herc's okay. all multiplexed on a one. Yeah, so it's a, it's on a CWDM system. Yeah. But yep. yeah. Normally we would run HD on a separate fiber. Yeah. It's interesting that you've got and it on the same one. Yeah. And um, it seems like the HD is normally on like uh, 1485 or 1530. 1550. Yeah. 1550. Yeah. We have one camera that does 1570. The other three main cameras are 1550. Uh. So mini Zeus, two Zeuses, the two Zeus pluses are all 1550. And we have the Apex 4K camera that's 1570. Okay. I think the slip ring is kind of the one of the like unsung heroes. It's yeah, this, we were this talking about that last night. It's incredible. It's a magic it? piece of equipment. Has anyone yeah. ever looked inside an optical slip ring? How, do, no. how does? Yeah, I uh, assume there's still prisms, a black right? Black box, total black box. Is it still like prismed? This yeah. like completely prismed. Prism. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's like voodoo. Yeah. Have you ever yeah. seen that uh, that album cover? <laughs> dark Pink side uh, of yeah, the moon. That's a dark side of the moon. Yeah, that's a. Slip ring actually. It's, yeah, nice. it's a oh. slip ring. <laughs> <laughs> they got inspired yeah. from the slip ring technology. So the slip Return ring the for anybody listening who doesn't know what a slip ring is is the winch. We're kind of, we're kind of it's constantly voodoo. hauling in it already. the winch. Oh yeah, yeah, that's it's it. Voodoo. It's voodoo. <laughs> yeah. So it's we have this this winch that's spinning, right? And we need have a lot of things on uh, the ship that are connected to it, right? The computers and fibers and power that are kind yeah. of connected to that. Put that and out those on need set to three not while spin. you're talking about it. <laughs> so you can imagine when we're hauling out or hauling in, you know, 3,000 meters of cable, that that would be a lot of turns in those cables. So in order to not have that, you have to have a slip ring which transfers uh, that information, whether it's power or the fiber. Um, transfers linear motion into rotary. Yep. Can you know your phone cable gets all twisted up? You don't want that. You want to yeah. wait for it to spin freely, especially when you're spinning 7,000 meters of it off. Yeah. Uh, there, we sure also use sure. a slip ring on our satellite dish, our antenna. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm just trying to picture like working around the slip ring. If we could get all of our computers and like screens and everything, we have like to spinning, but like yeah, we have to tie them up. Oh, we have, we to, have to spin with we, it. We well, start like with we 7,000. We could be like in the center like. of a cylinder. <laughs> And yeah. everything could be spinning around We us. would be the slip ring. Yeah, we're turning it. Right. We're, we're right. turning. Once the information comes to us, but our computers, everything, have to be... 10 meters. Above. All the viewers at home have to be inside this cylinder, too. Spinning. Yeah. Good idea. You could... That's another idea. You could, like, send it to space and then get it back again, right? Like, you have some sort of satellite antenna that's spinning and it's transmitting. That would be like an old-school slip ring if it just all transmitted to, like, an antenna. The satellite has to spin well, too. Like satellites? Well, maybe not the satellite, but if you did just like a, like a like a radio, like a wireless transmission, from your spinning drum to some like non-spinning receiver, then mm. problem solved. Wi-Fi. Okay. It's like pre-slip ring technology. Before they invented slip rings, there was Wi-Fi. I have to have the air air gap power. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the power is a, the power is a problem. <laughs> I guess it's not just the communications. <laughs> Nuclear. You need your <laughs> you need your generator to be spinning. That yeah. you can't work that one around. We'll just you could have fix the, the output well. shaft and then we'll spin the generator around it. Hmm. Mm -hmm. 
you know, in like a, a generator, a spinning generator. You know, like a cartoon where the person grabs the propeller yeah. on the plane and the plane starts spinning. Yep. Yeah, it's like that kind of deal. Isn't that a key element of a lot of science fiction films that they're using spinning things to create a sense of gravity? And yeah, totally. I wonder what they do for their using. slip ring. Yeah, that would be a slip ring too. Cowboy That's, Bebop? I think it's to use centrifugal force. One of the strangest spellings ever. Hmm? Centrifugal? 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 Not a real force. What's the you rule? You can fight against it, but it's fugal. Centripetal <laughs> is real, and Cent centrifugal is not. Centrifugal is felt, centripetal is real. Yeah. But it feels real, man. Hey, I've got a question for you, ROV pilots. <laughs> okay. Uh, does Argus, or sorry, do, well, I guess the question stands. Does Argus and Atalanta, do they have dumb weight on them, or are they just like f heavy, filled with a thruster and uh, and the camera, and they just don't have any foam. They have lead. They do have lead, eh? Yes. How yeah. much? Atalanta has. Uh, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Huh. Thousand pounds ish. Cool. Ballpark. Somewhere between five and twelve hundred. And it, the thruster on it can only spin it. Can't <coughs> push it in any. It can't translate at all. Can it? It can translate. Yeah, it can lateral. Oh, it has lateral thrusters in all directions? It has lateral Before thrusters aft. only, not axial. Okay. So it can go sideways. But not very well. <coughs> not very well. Typically use it just for spinning heading. In emergencies. Right. It's on It's on my to-do <coughs> list, for sure. Just lateral Atalanta? Uh, no, to update our Wikipedia page. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> I missed that part, sorry. Um, I do have a quick question for you, though, Trevor. When you were talking about when you gave your perfect textbook definition of our tether system earlier, a uh, viewer asked, is there any risk of the tethers getting tangled or stuck? Oh, heck oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Do you want That's to talk Rennie. about that for yeah, a minute? It's Rennie's it, life. Yeah. Every Did time you dry run of that the other day. <laughs> no. Huh? Too soon? No. No. Tether management is the key. That's what... That's most people in the van are focused on. Yeah. We don't talk about it much because it's kind of a feel thing. There's no quantitative sensors. But you watch your delta depth, you watch your vehicle position, watch the bathymetry, all the You've got cameras hazards. We got cameras directly at the, at the tethers, both yeah. on Atalanta and on Herc. Yes. Just yeah. on Herc. Those Not are the both. two butt cams. Yeah. And yeah, watching the tether is uh, most of the game. Yeah. Not only does it affect the tanglage, like that viewer mentioned, but it also affects the operation of the vehicles too. If it's too tight, you get pulled around. If it's too loose, it drags in the mud. That's when you hear one pilot tell the other, you're tugging on me or you're pulling on me or you want more leash. Yeah, it's They're not like... Yeah, we not yeah we're not that. just sitting up here. We into weird stuff. You know, it's <laughs> fine. Weird stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so they're working on the tether, trying to get yeah. that all sorted. Only on Sunday. <laughs> Ice cream days. Is it Sunday today? No, it's like... No, thankfully. Oh, uh, Tuesday. Th today's... Oh, say Tuesday? Tuesday. It's Tuesday. Oh, it's wrong. actual Tuesday. It's actual yeah. Tuesday today? <laughs> oh, <laughs> congratulations, <laughs> everybody. Wow. Yeah. Yay. Broken calendars right one-seventh of the time. <laughs> what? <laughs> As they say. As they say. <laughs> Broken yeah. calendars. Right. All right, I'm, uh, I'm switching out. I'm bringing back the lovely Lauren. You're welcome. Marvel. Bye. <laughs> Bye, guys. Thanks, Hello. Marley. Is it a broken morning. calendar? Yeah. Imagine your calendar was just this thin. It's just only yeah. Sundays. Like, yeah. what day is it today? Oh, it's broken. Correct. And the odd random real Tuesday fired in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just a real Tuesday. Oh. Actual Tuesday. This kind of looks like a metal band. The Pone Apple the, Farm. Like the font. It's like yeah, a totally. Metal, metal album, yeah. Hmm. Oh, you want to Never see mind. all the secret nav notes? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Pilots are idiots. What? You can't just... <laughs> <laughs> it's just like... <laughs> it's a dear diary. <laughs> poorly drawn cartoons of you guys.
small <coughs> batch beans. Can't believe Marley dissed my beans. Can't believe it. Are you you like black beans, right? Yeah. What's wrong with black beans? Nothing. I want to know They're what great. kind of beans Lauren thought we were talking about. <laughs> silly beans. I don't know. Coffee beans. <laughs> Just silly beans. Silly beans. <laughs> silly beans. <laughs> silly beans. <laughs> silly beans. <laughs> yeah. You know, the fact that I'm a mother. Silly beans. Silly beans. <laughs> <laughs> comes through. Beanstalk mm. beans. I was maybe, I was thinking you were bean talking combo. about the bean bag beans. Which are not are actually beans. That's, no, it's bead that's what, uh, beads. I know. Yeah. Yeah, that's but what spurned the conversation. We're <laughs> yeah. trying to oh. wonder what's what's in our bags, or what kind of bean. <laughs> but unfortunately, bean and bead sound very similar on comms. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. This is true. It's actually beet. Beet bag. A beet bag. A that's bag? the Dwight Schrute special right there. Yeah. It's Rennie special. It's a, it's a Rennie special. 2050 oh. meters. <gasps> I love beats. Did you see a yeah, Dwight, or uh, otherwise known as Rain Wilson, just posted that thing about being on the flight with the guy? Did you see this? He's on a plane somewhere, masked up. Guy sitting next to him on this like cross country flight is watching on the planes, thing, or maybe his device, non stop uh, episodes of The Office. Non stop. You think you've watched something else? And, and so towards the end, he asks him, So uh, you like that show? He's like, yeah, the first season took me off, blah, 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 but yeah, it's, it's hilarious. I love it. And as he's talking to him, he just starts slowly pulling down his mask <laughs> <laughs> until the guy, like, and he's like, Rain Wilson was like shooting little secret videos of like the guy watching a scene of him in the office, and then he would pan the camera to himself just with his eyes wide right open. That's very and funny. And he said that when the guy finally realized, he was like, what? And so he, he asked permission to post it online. That's amazing. That's the super guy's funny. like, of course, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. I like that there's a trend of people not recognizing Tony Hawk. Oh, yeah, and that's the thing. For you look him. exactly like, like Tony, Tony Hawk. Hawk. Did I ever tell you that? You look, yeah. You look like an old Tony Hawk. That's one of my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I get that a lot, almost daily. <laughs> It'd be a bad thing if you didn't get it daily. <laughs> He posts those little videos where he'll throw some boards in his uh, car and drive around and see some kids oh skateboarding. Yeah, do a kickflip. Kick <laughs> yeah, if they do a kickflip, he'll sign some boards and give it to them. Nice. Yeah. yeah. That's funny. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this question just came in. Okay, uh, the best part of it is the end part. So here it says, how do you become an ROV pilot? And then <laughs> they follow up with, that seems like a fun story. <laughs> Sorry, I don't right. want to read into that. <laughs> well, it all started in the pub. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it usually does. <laughs> yeah, it's like that. It's like how Leo DiCaprio got on the Titanic. That scene, he's gambling and gets the ticket. Oh, yeah. That's like, that's, yeah. That's how all ROV pilots get this. We drew the shortest straw. <laughs> yeah. Well, you yeah. gotta go. <laughs> oh, man. You could be a scientist, a navigator, a video guy, or whatever. <laughs> we drew the short straw and ended up with a friggin' ROV. <laughs> <laughs> you make it sound less than glamorous. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Let's take off the water water glasses. You know, to be honest, this is the reward for all the hard graft that goes into getting the thing running and keeping it together. You get to go and play around on the bottom of the ocean. Of course, yeah. But as for how you get to become one... Every single person has a different path. Yes. Different path. Although 95% of them do tend to have something to do with avoiding jail cells. Avoiding jail cells. <laughs> right. Gosh. So for our listeners out there. <laughs> and your sentencing, mention that you have some mechanical skills. Yeah. Yeah. You might say you to see. Oh, Focus on mechanics, hydraulics, electrics, electronics. Yeah. Enter Tedarenko. That side of things. <laughs> yeah. As soon as you mention jail cells and Josh turns up. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I didn't 
before this expedition, I didn't actually realize all of the mechanical stuff that you, you thought they just flew and then I, went, I took a nap. I actually kind of did. <laughs> yeah. It sort of used to be that way, where you oh. would have pilots, yeah, and then you would have techs. Okay. So you'd have guys, that, and that's all they do is they fly it and they break it, and then they bring it back on. And they expect somebody else to fix it. Throw the car keys. Hmm. Yeah. Show. But we have limited berthing, so it's kind of like it everybody's got to, to be. pilot techs. So if you're going to break it, you better know you how better, to fix it. You better fix it, yeah. Yeah. And uh, we kind of given you a run for your money this this expedition. There's been a few, you know, oh. repairs and stuff. Well, yeah. The, when you look at the kind of work that we put put yeah. the vehicle through, it's at depth 2,000 meters. So there's a lot lot of pressure oh. there anyway. Everything down there is heavy. Not there's nothing light about what you're asking the vehicle to do. So you're pushing it to the limit all the time. Yeah. And things break. We've done really well with it, to be fair, so far. Yeah. I haven't really broken anything major. <laughs> Knock on wood. <laughs> quick, quick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And there, there are actually schools for um, pilots as well, right? Yeah, yes. mainly in the states, they're in the uh, southeast uh, along the Gulf of Mexico, usually. Uh, Louisiana, Texas. And Hawaii, right? Because Megan, uh, Megan's learning to fly. Yeah, I don't know if they teach that. She oh, okay. works there. I don't know if they teach that. Um, I don't know. They're generally quite frowned upon. Because the, they, they, the do, they take a lot of money off you, but they don't, and they give you the very, very basics. You're better off to get a good yeah. good education in mechanical or electrical engineering and then uh, work that. And, you know, a program like Nautilus here, we have a very active internship program. Yep. So on a lot of our legs, we'll have an intern in each department. Uh, I had a video engineering intern out a couple legs ago. I got one coming on and a couple more legs too. Actually, no, when we come into port, we have a perpetual intern that we're really looking forward to have on. I uh, first applied in 2019 when he was an undergrad. Was and on then it. because of the pandemic, we yep. delayed. And then we had some logistic issues uh, getting him back out again. And so now I think he was year three of uni when he applied. And now he's earned his master's, <laughs> but it's kind. Of, and, and we we double checked. You know, is this still something that would benefit your career? And he's like, more than ever. I'm now yeah. laser focused on the combination of science and communication. So, looking forward to having him out. And he'll do the transit. The vessel's going to go back to Honolulu from Sydney, and then they'll go out and do. He'll go out and do a science leg as well. That's awesome. And uh, because Ocean Hours Canada is a Canadian organization. I will mention that uh, Memorial University of Newfoundland has a mm -hmm. ROV program. Is that in St. John's? I believe Holyrood. so. Holyrood. It's the Marine oh, okay. Institute, isn't it? It's not Memorial. It's Marine I think Institute. It's oh, Marine separate. Institute. Right. Remember, right? Thank That's you. That's actually quite an in-depth in program. program. Hmm? That's actually quite an in-depth program, if I remember right, though. It's like a couple of years. Yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah. It's not like your usual ROV school where they'll take 20 grand off you for two weeks. <laughs> Otherwise known as zero to hero. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they show you a basic eyeball ROV that you can pretty much, like this big. Yeah. But then they sell it to you as if that's you qualified, certified, which you're not, because there is no certification body for ROVs. Oh. To go out and run something like this, which hmm. obviously isn't going to happen. Right, not with two weeks. Yeah. So you ha you do have to be wary of it. I've heard good things about that one that you were just talking the about. Marine in Institute. Yeah. Yeah. Heard really good things about that. Right on. So we got, uh, what, another 100 meters to go? No. A no. little bit no. more than that. Another 500. <laughs> yeah, Five? 500 more meters. This is the deep site. It's another 20, hour. 2660. Okay. 
All right. Uh, no, like 20, 30 minutes. Yeah. Well, look at your rate. You got it right there. Time to bottom, 20 minutes. Oh, yeah, you you have the wrong bottom depth typed in. That's only going to 2300. Type, well, it's, fix it. <laughs> <laughs> Should be 50 minutes to bottom. Uh, I just did the math in my head. It's 10 meters. I know, but hard. yeah, I was like going off of what Trevor was saying, being there in, at 1030. That's your issue right yeah. there. Trevor. 2660. Whoa. The Marine Institute program well, is two years. You should, you should check your number. Yeah. 2.3 million. But they, they go through everything. Some bells they, in there. So you know, the mechanics, the hydraulics, they, they, they give yeah. you a grounding yeah. in all of it, which is fantastic. It's there perfect for, for this. Yeah, we had graduates of that program Trevor. come work in our department for a number of years, and they were, yeah, they knew everything. It was crazy. There was a person out with ONC in 21. She wasn't at your office long. She uh, moved to Calgary, I think. And she had studied ROVs. Are you uh, thinking of Keeley? Keeley yes. Keeley's Keeley. Keeley. moved to Texada, um, Texada Island. Island actually. Ah, okay. Yeah, and the person who's Keeley moved to great. Calgary is Adrian. She was a GIS specialist. Ah, okay. Yeah. Right. Oh, Adrian's great. Adrian, Adrian and I moved. Adrian yeah. and I did our grad program at the same place, but we just missed each other by a couple of years. In Delaware? That's right. And we had the same advisor and the same study site in the Andes. Uh, and she was really yeah, she was crazy about that the we Andes. both had the same study site that very few people have gone to. So she cursed you out for about four years doing her degree and then came out here and met you? Yeah, I mean, the reason that I recognized her name is I was like, why do I know your name? And it was because she cited my thesis when <gasps> she was doing Whoa. her work. Whoa. Was that Adrian? And I just happened to recall, yeah. I happened to like recall that she continued on I'm the work. Ready. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm Renato. She was, she was like, I know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> I know your sentence just, structure. Yeah. Well, that's kind of exciting, Renny. It was really funny because, you know, we were joking about it because we were working at 5,000 meters, plus 5,000 meters, and now we're working at minus 3,000. And it's like, how do we en end up the, doing this? same ship but neither of us had oceanography backgrounds well okay i shouldn't speak for her i didn't have an oceanography background i can't recall her background prior to prior to the, the andes yeah well i don't know i can't I can't remember but we're both do remote sensing and geospatial stuff as a navigator does some of them, yeah. That's kind of the same conversation that you're having before about different paths. Is yeah, there's lots of different ways to get into each role. Um, another uh -huh. plug for the Nautilus internship program is I was a Nautilus intern for seafloor mapping back in 2013, and that's how I started my career here. Anyone notice it feels a little bit cooler in here? Haven't no, I haven't noticed. No, because my sensor says it's minus two hundred and sixteen degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> wow! <laughs> it, your sensor does say that. I would check your sensor, Ed. Yeah, it seems seems like that might be an outlier. <laughs> Perhaps. And that's probably right around two hundred and sixteen Celsius as well. Don't they merge at some point? Like that? Like they minus they 80? meet at four, minus forty. Minus forty. Yeah. Yeah. Minus forty C and minus forty F are the same. So uh, folks are asking about the expedition and the next one. So this is um, Nautilus 151 with Ocean Networks Canada. We are on the ship for exactly seven more days. Oh, really? I never yeah. Wow, already? Yeah. One week left. And uh, and then the... Really? Yeah, we, we get back into Sydney. Tuesday morning. On Tuesday morning. What was it morning? Why am I so... That's we like could completely be eating unexpected. Sydney donuts at exactly this time in seven days. You can right see. You are. Bakery. Look at that. What was that, AJ? We could be eating Sydney donuts. Sydney donuts. Mm. In exactly one week. I really like the donuts here, actually, too. Um, Sydney bakery donuts. Sydney are bakery donuts highly are. Highly recommend. Yeah, they are something Ooh. special. Is that the place down on the right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, aptly named the Sydney Bakery. Huh. They took your naming like convention, Ed, for all of yeah. your, uh, your yeah. 
I like uh, how you could describe setup. where it is in Sydney by saying down on the right. <laughs> yeah, and I, we all, we all, oh, yeah, and we're all yeah, like, oh yeah, that's, right that's it. Yeah. yeah, it gives you a sense for <laughs> how big <laughs> Sydney is. <laughs> down, down on the right. <laughs> I was kind of bummed when uh, the street on the one block down on the right had a good sandwich shop that went under. I think it was called Toast. Yeah, I think I remember Toast. Yeah. Yeah, they're real nice. explicit in their naming in Sydney. They've been, yeah, yeah, they like to be pretty on the on the nose. Yeah. I think there's been quite a bit of restaurant turnover in the last few years. Yeah. Well, with COVID and, yeah. And losing the ferry. Yeah, the yeah. Yeah. ferry. Yeah. That's, that's too bad. Is that ever coming back? Where was the I ferry? Don't know. There was so a walk It goes from Anacortes, Washington, Washington, Washington. Uh, to all the San Juans and then uh, and ended up in Sydney or vice versa. Uh, and once it's a gone. day, yeah. But they just celebrated like the 50th anniversary of it, or the hundredth, and it's not running. They're hoping to restore it, but they're saying a couple more years. The you American really, ferries, you can't really the Seattle ferries, the anniversary if it's not Washington State ferries are having issues it's not with staffing anymore. Yeah, that's what I thought too. Yeah. I'd take I mean, that. <laughs> maybe they all got together and stapled the ribbon back together or something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's like try the, this again. The folks. opposite of a ribbon cutting. Yeah. I took that ferry uh, on my first visit to Victoria. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's surprisingly long. I can't remember what it was. It was well, like the Anacortes Ferry, well, it stops in a number of Yeah, it gives you usually stop at San Lopez, Lopez I remember uh, it stopping. Uh, Maybe it San Juan stop. Island, Orcas Island. Yeah, it the, did. One, the <laughs> one that goes to uh, Sydney stops at those and then hits Sydney and then hits them on the inverse. Yeah. And I, a marked difference in the Washington State ferries versus the BC ferries. Oh yeah, BC ferries are, are yeah, all like different. business. Yeah. Because they're no longer part of our, well, they're only partially part of our public. Well, it feels like business class to me from the Washington State ferry. Yeah. It just has like two, you know, bench seats. Yeah. And you've got these giant, We you have know, white spots. So. Yes, we do. I like the new, I like the new like mini, mini coastals, the, the Salish Raven and Salish Heron. Have you taken those? No. They go to like Salt Spring they and go stuff? Like, yeah, Pender and Salt Spring and Maine. And they're awesome. Little ferries, but they feel like the big, like they have all the amenities of the big ferries. Mm. Are they walk on or drive on? Both. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Well, you got to have ferries when you've got 434 islands in the Salish Sea. Yeah. A lot of islands. What's your favorite island other than Vancouver Island? Don't say Vancouver Island. I really like Quadra Island. Yeah? Yeah, I really like Quadra Island. I went to my friend's cabin on North Quadra Island and it once and it was awesome. It yeah, was Quadra Island awesome is place. like it's big enough that it has intact forests and then it's got beautiful beaches and it's kind of out of the way. It's it's a beautiful Beautiful island. I installed an earthquake early warning site on Quadra Island at the oh, Hackett cool. Institute. Oh, cool. Yeah. You got to ring me up next time you come. Yeah? Yeah. My wife was just there doing some <coughs> some training, and she was told me, she's like, we have to come explore Quadra Island. Like, it's so crazy. Well, and there's a whole canoe route you can do on Quadra Island. Yeah, well, that's wow. where the cabin was. It's up in the north, right? Yeah. The main, the main lakes canoe route? Yeah. I've yeah, yet so to we do that. Kind of on one, I think we were either on or near one of those lakes when we were up that way. And it was really, really nice. But, uh, yeah, they're getting a new ferry. Or do they have it already? Don't the hybrid, know. they're getting the new hybrid ferries. Yeah, you know, they put new ferries on at the uh, Hornby Denman. That's the cable ferry. And they just have broken down the I, like, I don't even touch Hornby and Denman in the summertime. It's just so busy with tourists. It's something you got to do when uh, in the off season. Is that the cable ferry? Like, cable ferry yes. to get to Denman? Yeah, you, the Vancouver Island Denman is yeah. cabled, but then yeah. the next one, the Hornby Denman Island connection, is not cabled. Right. Damn. And um, yeah, actually, fun fact thank you to our l listener in the Netherlands. Um, Ocean Networks Canada has instrumentation on the ferries. So we have instrumentation on the ferries from 
um, Nanaimo to Vancouver, and then yep. I and also the Swanson, <coughs> um, Swartz Bay yeah, Victoria, sailing Vancouver. as well. Yes, and we are intending on having instrumentation on the new hybrid ferries, like the one that's going to go to Quadra. Cool. Are those made in uh, Vancouver? The ferries themselves? Yeah. I don't believe so. Parts oh, really? of them are manufactured, I believe, in Germany. Yeah, uh, somewhere in Europe. And then they're assembled in BC. Right, good. Island class ferries is what they're called. Hybrid electric. You know, sometimes the old stuff can just keep it working. You know that the like the main queen, the electric up here in the northwest has a huge value proposition though, because almost all of our power is hydro. That's true. Mm -hmm. So it's not like we're just shifting. Like if I bought a Tesla at my house and I lived in Ohio, there's probably a coal-fired power plant somewhere generating the electricity for yeah. that car. Not yep. that, it, but the car's not making emissions but yeah, still we call that greenwashing yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. but here in the northwest where like for my local utility 98.5 percent of their power comes from hydro right that's an infinitely renewable resource however there's the, also the a, a cost yeah, yeah the batteries and then there's also the cost of maintaining the hydro infrastructure right yeah. that's, that does yep. not have a zero footprint on right um, the earth as well, so just about using less. I do like the fact that ONC does a carbon offset on almost all of their activities as far as I know. That's uh, right. That's the hybrid fantastic. ferries, they were built in Romania. Oh, wow. Romania. Yeah, yeah, I would Damon. not have guessed that. Damon Shipyards. Um, back to the instruments on the BC ferries. Um, it's really neat data on uh, actually phytoplankton. So we have a number of instruments, I think, uh, definitely CTD, um, yeah. but then also a fluorometer on the instruments on the ferry. So when you plot that data, you can actually see some really neat seasonal patterns in the plankton growth. Yeah, and for a while we actually had a microscopic camera. Oh, really? On I didn't there know too. that. Yeah, know that it's called the Holosea. So we were trying to take pictures of the phytoplankton as as we skimmed across the surface of the water um, yeah so that's out there somewhere but we Sean do we have that still or no um, I'm not currently working on that project so I can't say for certain all right um, AJ is still reading about fairies? No, I'm not. I don't know. <laughs> the flash? To there writing it is again. Lessons learned on this cruise. Yes. <laughs> of which there are a lot. Are you going Somebody's through full? the second pass yet? or? No, I'm no, still, still on, on the, the first pass. Up? Still on the vent stage. Okay. You guys, is there a flash activated somewhere? That was me. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> It's reflecting off of the of our sonar screen. Uh, Remy, oh. have, have you lost there. some part of your memory? <laughs> Why? Huh? Like what? Uh, Where am I? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about the last few hours. Yeah. <laughs> That's no. going to be hard to filter out of memories. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll remember the the number of the dive I was on for years to with come. Josh. I know. Years ago, but can't. <laughs> Six years. That was that was weird. Honestly, I don't know. I was like, oh yeah, 1589, we were on that time. <laughs> like, <laughs> I remembered which cruise it was on, that's weird. <laughs> was it a Sunday? Yeah, you know what, might as well have been. It was Tuesday. We might have to update these dive plans. These vertical transects are making everyone a little loopy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Check in on mental health of front row. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's now written into the dive plan. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> and tweet. We will Front go row is loopy. There is a bottom. We'll get there. <laughs> Oh boy. My favorite is I've just noticed there's a stick that's holding <laughs> the. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's the not a stick, it's a calibrated instrument. The, yeah. the calibrated instrument. It's actually is our peace pipe. No. <laughs> is holding Very. the ROV position in place so that's that right. Dave doesn't have to. There's quite the spring on there, and I don't think anybody could hold yeah. it. Yeah. But look, see, perfectly calibrated. Perfectly yeah. calibrated. Yeah. Work Looks smarter, not harder. Yeah. We uh, we have upgraded the milk crate though to the milk crate version 4.0 underneath it. Yeah. Yeah. To get it to the right height, and then we also put a doormat. I think we tie wrapped it to the bottom so it mm -hmm. doesn't scrape up the floor. Oh. Slide around. Yeah. And yeah. it's a yellow milk crate just to bring a little bit of yeah, a little pop of color, a bit of brightness. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> Tell you can't be as bright as it is outside. A little, little bit of sunshine. Beautiful out there. It, oh. it, yeah, and it doesn't really look yellow under the red light in here in the van, oh, but really you know that's all good. Well, it might not be. I'm colorblind. Just a little <laughs> <laughs> colorblind. <laughs> colorblind how do we switch it to? <laughs> how do we switch it to blue? That's uh, right over here. Oh uh, yeah. wait. We do a trial run of blue. Who has it? Do you have it? I don't have it. Blue light or blue milk crate? Oh, it's back there. Where? Over in this that right thing. here. Yeah. Oh, ooh, hold on. Let me stretch. Put my monkey arms to use. Please. Oh, oh, oh not that one. Not blue. Oh, fail. Got That's a blue. No. Okay, hold on. Oh, my eyes. Yeah, oh, there you go. Yeah, look at that. That's cool. Do you have RGB? <laughs> it's like we're underwater. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, blue's blue's pretty nice. Yeah, oh, the yeah. blue light's I'm pretty good. Blue. Yeah, we'll stay blue for this. Watch blue out, watch. home decorating blue channels. Watch. That's what we We're should coming. do, is it should be blue for a for sense of descent. Oh, yeah. Whoa. It's a red mode. A red That's when we're exploring? Red, red means yeah. go. Yep. Yeah. Red Whoa. alert? Red Whoa. alert. That's right. The yeah. Duck, the duck's still there. That's good. Yeah, the yellow crate, it really makes the, the front row pop. You know? Yep. Yeah. Yep, we know. Yeah. <laughs> that, Next. That's why we styled it that way. <laughs> but these don't turn blue. I think I'll have to turn the red down a bit. There we go. Yeah. yeah I like these lights, the l small work lights we have. That was a good find. All right. I had an interaction with a group in Texas. What did I miss? Do we see anything in the transect? Remy might tell you he's got a memory for that kind of thing. Yeah, we saw yeah. seven thousand Tina Force and <laughs> <laughs> seven thousand yeah forty one. I'm sure they logged whatever we saw, but it's been a lot of this. Oh, I think we got a copepod. Who is watching this footage? There's who? Water column's been really full actually. There's been a lot yeah. of life all the way down. It has been. Um Which is yeah, quite I'm not surprising. Too sure who the PI on this specific transect is, but um in the past, we've had uh, Jackson Chu look at certain oh, yeah. dives. Last night for recovery, we, when we hit like, I think it was 100 meters and 100 meters to 50 meters depth, it was like so dense. Like it, it looked like completely, uh, almost like clouded over, you know, with uh, plankton and stuff. Hmm. The biology layer was thick. That's interesting. Were you doing a transect? No. Uh oh. I don't, well, actually, no, I don't think we were, no. We're at a different site now. Yeah, that would have been Endeavor West Flank. That was yeah. pre-transit. Now we're miles away. Yeah, yeah, it was It was really like, we were talking about taking a NISC and be filled. You had yeah. none left. Oh, no, West Flank you would have. Yeah, yeah we, we had, had everything left. left, yeah. Yeah, but there's no room in the fridge anymore for NISCs. No more Niskins. No more Niskins. Fridge space constraint. We have a surprising number of listeners <laughs> right now. What's wow. surprising about <laughs> well, very, very quality banter? Right yeah, now. quality banter. 
So shout out to folks in the United States, Canada, United Kingdom, Germany, Italy, France, Singapore, Norway, Netherlands, Ireland, Finland, and Spain, and Denmark. Well, Singapore. Yeah, huh? Sing hey. that's funny. I was thinking that Singapore I'd was love to go back. not one that I typically yeah, hear Yeah, I like Singapore. There. Yeah, me too. Yep. Well, thanks for joining us. I've been to Singapore. I've not been. Everyone yeah, seems to have gone in this van. Very nice. Place. Yeah. I haven't been since I revitalized, you know, that whole area. And I was working most. I think you were too. Didn't you work out in Changi? Like yeah. Worked in yeah. Luoyang. For Luoyang, yeah. yeah. That's right where I worked at. Hmm. I went to a conference at the Marina Bay Sands building. Oh, yeah. It was pretty cool. We actually, uh, after I was done with my work in Singapore, we stopped there on holiday going somewhere. Phuket, I think. Oh, it was nice. Did you go see the, what do they have, like the Cloud Garden or whatever? No, it's it was, this is uh, 94. Oh, yeah. No, no, it was later than that. And... 99 What's it called? maybe the, cl the cloud forest highly yeah, recommend yeah 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 looks super cool it's crazy cool and as i recall i don't know if it's the same but when i was there there was no street in singapore where two cars pass one another without an island in between them it's possible yeah it's possible ooh we've just had someone join from australia and south africa welcome this is Been your next no. installment of Mindless Banter. Yeah. <laughs> Care uh, of. <laughs> it was in Cape Town a couple of years ago. Well, that's another nice place. Dirk, Dirk's from South Africa. Yep. Up there. Is he? Yeah. yeah. I was trying to place that yeah. accent. He, but he doesn't have a South African accent. It's something. I'm trying to figure it out. It's There's just a little. Yeah. I asked him about it earlier this cruise. I feel let down almost. Yeah. Well, we already know you have an accent. That's. You have the T dot accent. The T dot. I yeah. haven't got an accent. Not at all. You lot have accents. <laughs> do I sound different than everyone else, Dave? Do I, do I sound like I'm from the big city? <laughs> the city slicker back there. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't think so. Does Steph have an Ontario accent? I don't think so. Lauren? Think? Pardon me? Does do Steph I have an, have an Ontario accent? Nah, just you. <laughs> That's harsh. <laughs> I mean, Steph's no. Do you, <laughs> does Steph's he have from an Sarnia. Accent? Not to me, no. He sounds like he could be from Sarnia. Okay. Maybe it's a BC thing. I don't know, Lauren. I think you're just hating on me. I think BC accent's very similar to Ontario. Yeah. It's, it's been eating at him for. It's all like good. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's the yeah. 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 <laughs> Tarana. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, eh? Oh, yeah, The ones eh? you can read. Don't you know? <laughs> All right, we've got a full house in the front. We do have a full house. <laughs> we do have a full house. Fuller House, the remake? Yes, we're talking about uh, Trevor's just re-entered the van and discussing our van Blue decorating is. techniques. We've moved from red light to blue light. Ed, what other colors do we have in that? I don't know. I've never messed with it. You want me to go uh, press buttons? Well, I can go press buttons. Like it exactly looks what we need to be like a right Kino flow, but I can't tell. Yeah. I'm sure it's LED. Can I, I uh, break anything? Trevor can. Uh, Trevor can. Probably. Poke at it. Trevor. That's part of yeah. the production department. I don't know. I, I don't yeah. really get it because looking at this camera, I can't really see a difference. Well, no. Oh. Oh. no, I see no. that. No. 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 Bad. Get no. rid of it. Blue. Blue's you should better. be able to dial them in individually. Uh, still Yellow. bad. No. Yeah. Don't like that one. Yeah. Red. That's red. We yeah, have yeah, that. Yeah, I don't see that at all. Yeah. That's no entity. I do like the uh -oh. Sith cave back <laughs> in there. That whole studio is all. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah. Darth Sidious. Yeah. I saw Antonella working back there on some code, and she was just in there with her hood up. It was like oh, yeah. working on Mustafar. <laughs> no, everything's good. And we're back to red. So really, that's it? We have red, blue, and black?
winding. I think you can white. do more, but I think they only yellow? seven. We have yellow. Oh, no. Yellow oh, and white light. Oh, oh, so we have four, four colors. Yeah. I, oh, I can oh, barely no. tell the difference. You, you can dial them individually. Yeah. They are very, they are different. Good, jo good job. <laughs> that was his subtle way of just changing it back to red, even though we're in blue one. Or good. He was like, he's like, oh, let me go see what other colors there are. <laughs> back to red. <laughs> Dave, we got a listener from Northern Ireland. Yeah. Someone's just chimed in to say hello. Hello yourself. <laughs> <laughs> he likes to understand, or she will understand that. Yeah. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> you're such a rude way to like <laughs> right. respond to yourself. Yeah. Ble bless their heart. <laughs> oh man, look at this. USBL after this depth starts to get a bit fun. Do that. Wait, who, uh, what's no, that? did you do that? Do what? I think Trevor turned it back to blue. How'd that happen? <laughs> did you just change it <laughs> back Everyone, to blue? What did you One, do? two, three. Everyone yeah. look at Trevor. <laughs> Somebody just ninja the lights. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what happened either, but we're just all looking at you. Who changed the lights? Did you change them? Yeah, they were red a second ago. Do you have eyes? Maybe there was. He's Trevor out the was app. pressing a bunch of buttons, so maybe it just. Yeah, like he was pressing buttons back there. We don't need to worry ourselves about it. Now he's asking for a paper. There's the towel, wipes right like. there in the bottom drawer. Those make it a little bit more difficult to fall asleep, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. The bless their hearts was said by Dave. For Dave's Nappy. from Ireland. Yes. When I was yeah. a child, I had a blue light bulb, and that's how I slept, was with the blue light on. And this and explains I, I a lot. Yeah, you know, I looked it up later, and it's like, that's I not what you should do at all. I was where no. this was going, because you said that in some, with a voice that sounded really depressed. <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently, <laughs> it's done a number on me. So like that, your like <laughs> your night light, Rennie? What's that? It was your night light. It was a blue light. Yeah, but it was like a proper lamp with a blue light bulb in it. That was like I slept with, like with this this color. Really? Yep. You can't go For to sleep with that color because, on. Well, because your parents made you do I, that. Now I can't sleep <laughs> as an adult. <laughs> I have sleep problems. Do you think this this oh. is related? Huh. We we should not be laughing at his pain. No, it's funny. Sleep that. sleep problems are not good. Yeah, we'll wait till he leaves. Yeah. <laughs> you Good just point. need a blue light in <laughs> your <laughs> cabin here. Yeah. It'll remind hey. you of all your sleep problems as a child. I'll try that. Slept like a child back then. <laughs> yeah, if you close your eyes, you could sleep like a child right yeah. now under the blue light. <sighs> I love I love sleeping at sea. I don't know what it is about that. So you're rocking in a hammock. Oh, yeah. You're rocking? Yeah. I kind of wish I wasn't on the night shift, so I didn't have to try to do it in broad daylight, but it's still very, uh, it's one of the things I look forward to coming to see. So Are you on the top deck? I am, yeah. That's yeah, a little I tricky to dismount. Oh, you, you, they're not there when you're getting down. What's are you, that? Are yeah, you, are you all yeah. the way forward, though? You're I'm they're in all 16. the way aft. Aft. Wait, oh, you're, you're in 16, though. Okay, Aren't yeah. you in 16? Which one's 16? Has the a TV one next in to the it. Mess. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Got it. I don't yeah. know how you sleep up top. I don't I'm know in the how belly you of the boat. Sleep. <laughs> and that's the only, like, I, I could not sleep. Just <laughs> because of the motion. <laughs> because of the motion. I oh, I don't know sleep. how they sleep up front. That's what I don't know. Oh, yeah, no. Man. The, the, I don't I find my cabin not bad at all for motion. But I'm in the I cannot believe way what, bottom yeah, Sean, like your cabin. I couldn't do that. It's not bad. Really? Yeah. I don't know, but to each their own. I went into that fun house lounge for like 10 <laughs> minutes and I yeah. got to see. <laughs> Those it chairs really, are super yeah, comfy. It does kind of feel like the Gravitron at a carnival, you know? Yeah. 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 Spinning that's machine. Good, that's <laughs> a good way right. to describe it. <laughs> yeah. Is that the one where you can walk up the walls? Yeah, basically, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. We put spill protection on the ceiling. Yeah. I don't understand. Was it just not See how much possible it gets? to put real windows in that? Yeah. It hit oh, it takes, there are real windows. it takes C's right it over. Is, yeah. uh, so there's portals in there, oh. but they're closed from the outside so that light Seven. doesn't affect the mate's vision at night. Yeah. Uh, you have to can have uh, light pollution forward of the bridge. And huh. so the oh. crew closed them at That's night ten. and decided they didn't want to go out there again. So Sometimes it's bow thruster noise, oh, but I, I see it's light pollution happen. from the lounge into the bridge. In, oh, no, onto the uh, bow of the vessel, yeah. the forecast or whatever that's called. Uh, you can't have light spilling from that area out to where the, it would affect the mate's night vision. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. So, so they're closed from the outside. They just haven't been sending somebody out to mm -hmm. open no. them. Yeah. If those windows opened, mm -hmm. it would yeah. way very much change the feel of that space. Sure, yeah. I thought they were just fake portholes. No, no they're real. Uh, but I there's, have seen there's a cap on the outside. Of, of sky on the outside. So. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I thought they were for show. That may, Yeah, that makes way more sense. Thank you for explaining that to me, Ed, because I was, I was losing sleep over it. Oh, yeah, yeah. You it, should try it a blue light. It was either that or it was the blue light. <laughs> it was the blue light. <laughs> it's the Rennie's blue night light. <laughs> Yeah, I was just think I, I like something jogged my memory about that. I forgot about it, and then I was like, that can't have been good. Blue light is what you're supposed to avoid. Yeah. High well, frequency light, now. right? Yeah. But like that's that's probably made we just didn't right? know that stuff back then. You turned out all right. Oh. I'll vouch for you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we are 2,442 meters. We are heading to 2,660 Six meters. 660, yeah. We're at Cascadia Basin. We got some instrument swaps to do. Are we going to look for the bean bags first? The bean bags, yeah. did you say? Yeah. As in legume? Yes. <laughs> or the bead bags. As in jewelry for Hercules. 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 <laughs> Hercules. <laughs> so why did we kick those off the aft three hours ago? Well, we did that so that they'd be down there when we got down there. Uh, we need them for ROV ballast. So the ROV has to trim itself to be buoyant at all times. But we sent it down carrying some heavy instruments that are going to get put on the seafloor. So you kind of need to Indiana Jones your weight. Uh, in order to continue to fly Hercules. So we needed to send down some weight to meet us at the bottom, but uh, we made sure it was only a little bit so that we don't accidentally damage a sensor. Indiana Jones. Yeah, That's referring the, to uh, the scene where he's got to pull the idol off of the stand or, or the jewel and replace it with oh, the exact same weight. Got to talk to Allison about putting some Indiana Jones on the... Uh, Movie yeah, Rolodex. I did not see any Indiana Jones. Yeah, on no, drive, lots that of feels James like Bond. A real oversight. Yeah, an NMT. oversight. Yeah. It might go on my uh, feedback form. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know if anyone's going to collect your feedback, AJ. <laughs> you know what? Next time you're on here, AJ, <laughs> you there's going to be one Indiana Jones, and it'll be the Crystal Skull. There you go. Is there? <laughs> just for you. Yeah. <laughs> Trevor's, oh. just for reference, Little Trevor is pointing at the garbage can and saying, there's a suggestion box for you, yeah. AJ. Yeah, Indiana Jones and more cereal, I think. <laughs> oh, I thought you were talking about one of the up forthcoming movie. I thought you were talking about the podcast. <laughs> Indiana Jones <laughs> and, and more cereal. More cereal. <laughs> yeah, this is just, oh, I think they're they're retired here yeah. <laughs> <board. laughs> <laughs> cereal. I'd go to that. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy! I would go to a movie theater to watch Harrison Ford eat cereal on yeah. screen. That's okay. kind of odd. Oh, you uh, know, he whatever. does that in uh, Star Wars Holiday H Special, Henry, no. or whatever okay. it is. He's got a really interesting breakfast scene in that film. Huh. There you go. Look, it's getting better now. So, people listening in Science Party Land actually keep trying to uh, bring us back to topical subjects, 
and uh, I'm not doing a very good no. job of reining in. I don't know why it does that. All of this crowd, oh, but do uh, I'm going to attempt right now. Uh, <laughs> it might go a sideline again, but people are wondering what we've found uh, um. when we're exploring. Interesting and bizarre things. I will tell you that my interesting and bizarre thing are the conversations we have in the van. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the interesting and bizarre things I've found. Well, we're not, when we're in kind of the science exploration mode, we have a lot more horizontal coverage as we're, and we typically try to choose dive plans based on, um, you know, topography and places we think we'll see interesting biology at certain depths, et cetera. So we're not really in that mode right now. We're kind of, here to um, maintain mo infrastructure. Yeah, maintain t maintain Im infrastructure uh, for Ocean Hours Canada. But there have been some opportunistic science objectives and transects. Um, but it's typically a shorter amount of time than our typical, you know, days and days on the seafloor, uh, covering a lot of ground. Well, thanks, and I I would. Uh add that some of the things that are interesting and bizarre are just like what we've had to encounter and, and solve with the ROV, like all of the weird things we have to get you guys to do. Yeah. Then we need to do this step, and then we need to do that step. Yeah. Like yeah, holding that measuring cup upside down, that was fun. Yeah, yeah. we never got to that, though, because we couldn't find any bubbles. Oh. Yeah. That one would have been good, though. T-Boss. Yeah. T-Boss is always yeah. an interesting experience. Toilet brush of science. Yeah. Upside Things down gas tights. Upside down gas tights. Gas yeah. tights, yeah. Yeah. Flange pool. That's flange pool gas tight. Uh, mm. We did see the coral. We did take a little tour of the coral cliffs. I heard that was pretty exciting. I slept through it, personally, but... We saw, yeah, we saw some nice coral on that. And we saw whale bones, which I also slept through. It seems like Dirk gets to do all the cool sightseeing, yeah. and yeah. I get to do... Six gas tights. Yeah. We saw a cool dried up hydrothermal vent yesterday. Yeah, we saw what we think yeah. to be the uh, end of Hulk. So this is kind of neat, actually. Vent. I don't... TBD, we're still... I'd like someone more educated <laughs> in the navigation down there <laughs> to, <stop>. to <laughs> confirm <laughs> that that was in fact Hulk yeah. uh, that we saw before we jump to any conclusions, but or preliminary results. Yeah. But the that is not uh, unknown. Like hydrothermal vents are known to stop and start. Yeah. So and I think the last time we visited Hulk there were no smokers on it. Or at least the last time we thought we visited Hulk. Again. Not always sure if you're in the right place. Yeah. Um so that, that sort of <coughs> checks out. But we should put tape on them. Yeah, put a little Colored sign. Colored tape. Yeah. <laughs> Just put a little sign on a stick that says, no flags. Yeah. you're yes. at Hulk. That's there right. are some that's labeled fence down there. Keep are going there? for Cortez. How do the labels not just How get they, grown yeah. over? What do you mean? How do they label them, right? So you can label the rocks. Bar the There's Barker. one opposite of Smoke and Mirrors on Easter Island. That's a, a tall spire, and it just has this plaque at the top that just says, like, the, a number or a, a letter. Huh. It's some cl clearly some experiment from long ago or identification one of them has a gas t has a uh, bars <laughs> encased in the side encased of it encased into it yeah. now yeah. yeah i mean it's no surprise that grotto is so easy to spot because it has all that you know identifying stuff on it if we tried like to the label lights. the other ones yeah yeah we should put lights at all of them different colors well <laughs> yeah no well okay Sleepy blue vent. I, I will. Blue. I will just yeah. jump in and say <laughs> that. <laughs> blue, like, we get to the sleepy blue and we lose a navigator. <laughs> <laughs> just pass out in the front row. Oh man! Ready? Where are we going next? <laughs> ready? Ready? Where are you? Ready? <laughs> Quick! Look away from the blue vent. Hey! 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 So how's uh, it gone bringing things back on top? Yeah. <laughs> <Yeah>. Not. <laughs> Blue is the color of the ocean, Ed. Thank you. <laughs> it's also the color of this room right now. Yeah. Oh, boy. Uh, 
the Endeavor hydrothermal vents is a marine protected area, so probably have to go through some red tape to leave anything on the seamount on the we, um, vents. We do. We do have we to have put in applications to, to for everything that we put yep. in uh, there and take away and and uh, yeah, that's right. It's all being kept track of. Good stuff. Marine protected areas. They work. I seem to remember in the early years it was more discussed that the stuff we were putting down would be taken away, but now is it a little more like like comfortable in its permanence with Ocean Networks? Like the uh, I think we still have like in our I could be wrong about this, but I do think that we have some sort of like fund or money set aside to like if we have to recover it all, then yeah. we can go and recover it all. Like we okay. are very much aware that we're not leaving stuff on the bottom of the ocean. This is a science experiment that has to be cleaned up. Um, and you know, when the experiment has run its course, or you know, when we're done with our equipment, then then we will we'll clean it up. But right now, so far, like uh, we're gonna keep on going. Yeah, it kind of seems like pretty valuable infrastructure to like to completely dismantle as long as we're getting good information out of it. Yep, our funding, Precisely. Our funding has been renewed, so we have a, a, a pretty re long, well, yeah, we've got a reasonable um, path in front of us of funding, so yeah, onwards we go, collecting data from the ocean. Thank you, you know, this is opportunity for sponsor notes. Thank you to the <coughs> Canadian Foundation for Innovation. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Hey, AJ, CF5. do you guys have the same sort of thing over on the East Coast? Uh, no, I don't think there's any cabled observatory on the East Coast. I know... Only in collaboration with Holyrood, uh, MISO. We have yeah, that's right. that yeah, we one have partner a, we project have, uh, in uh, Conception Bay of Newfoundland. That's right, yeah. Okay. This one on the platform. U.S. side, I think, right? Yeah, in Washington, Rennie, yeah. No, I mean on the, on the, east. On the east Coast. Oh, on the east I thought there was a, some efforts to be... As part of OOI, maybe, which I think is perhaps under the Woods Hole. I remember reading about all this. NSF. It's a U.S. National Science Foundation initiative. But doesn't the Woods Hole site, maybe those are all just moorings, but I, I thought they had like a data portal similar to mm. ours. I can't that speak had to a lot that. of ocean data. I'm not sure if there's anything cabled though. No, I, d I don't know about that. I, th I know there's a lot of moorings. And also, uh, we might be able to look that up through the Canadian Integrated Ocean Observing System, which is a national uh, Acronym is CIUS. Bless you. And the American <laughs> counterpart <laughs> is IUS. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking of, is IUS. Yeah. All right. So, practically speaking, um, someone was curious about the ROV. Um, we lost the ROV on one of our expeditions, didn't we? Yes, we, we did. About that. <laughs> do, do we dredge this back up? No, uh, we were fortunate. Very, very lucky. Yeah, so tell us, tell us we what were happened. on Ocean Networks Canada, laying at the end of a cable lay. Feels like, a, like some blame there, but... Oh, no, no, there was <laughs> nothing. It was, it was a s stressful moment. Uh, just in general for the operations, but that actually ended up having nothing to do with h how the vehicle was lost. But um, uh, Argus parted uh, at the 6-8 termination, and um, so we lost, uh, obviously, power and comms and everything, and w we went into what we thought was a dead vehicle recovery because we weren't quite sure what was happening. Um, but then it became apparent while we were in the water, based on numerous factors that uh, the vehicles were still down on the seafloor, and so, uh, yeah, Argus was sitting on the seafloor, and Herc was buoyant and floating above it, so we kind of knew what the scene would look like. Um, and then there was a scramble and a lot of coordinated efforts with a lot of different partners. Um, Altimeters have just kicked in, 85 to go. Roger that. ROV uh, Jason was on the Tom Thomas G. Thompson and in the area, and they had 
a team that has just been working on the OOI uh, observatory. So kind of like a perfect scenario and they were able to um, give us a day or two of work. We came up, worked on a dive plan and um, yeah. Was that your first time seeing the Thompson? Me? Yeah. No. Oh, it's a nice vessel. Yeah. It's really cool. What caused the, what caused? It worked itself out, uh, I think with many things, but one, uh, kind of like moving it around laterally, perhaps. Um, kind of, it, it, the way that it was terminated, it shouldn't have happened. So it was kind of like a, and hasn't with, historically with that type, but. Um, so you're still not you're not really sure like it it just it seems kind of like a like a strange a bit of, yeah failure. but I think there was some talk about whether or not if we were moving Argus laterally not in the direction that the um that yeah, the, like the sway goes um, the hinge and it kind of may have started to twerk out the uh, steel around the football but. And then we, you know, there's a lot of heaves on that dive. Okay, I'm going to switch you over to Doppler and get all set up here now that we're... So we are getting close to bottom. Or close to our target depth at the bottom. So first stop on the dive plan is the IP. Roger. So once Hercules backs up and gets set up under Atalanta, I suspect Atalanta will swing west and be close to what we have as the IP and we'll get sorted out with all our offsets and everything. Silence for the first time in the last three hours. We're going to have to go from blue light to red light pretty soon. Yeah. Otherwise, I'll take a nap. <laughs> but see, it corrected itself. It went back to being, I, I think it, it I, I sometimes see it at that depth limit at somewhere at like 2300 and and beyond. I don't know. It. I, I didn't see a correlation with the bow thruster this time. Usually that'll kick it around, but. We'll see. We'll see how it performs once we're down here. Fifty meters off bottom. Roger. Uh, the there is a CTV and a cork that should be on the other side. And then you said, what did you say about the hydrophone? Uh, there's a two element hydrophone array that's a little bit tall. It's like a CTD monument. Okay. Are we doing this survey to the bottom? So I should stay? Yeah, if you can. Yep. The hydrophone array is 52 meters at 16 degrees. So it's quite a ways north. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah, I see it up there. Yeah, we're fine. Fine for that. Ooh. Jelly. The ground fault's as low as it's been in a while. Mm. I've just brought the craft arm back on just to get calms up. Calms up. Oh, okay, there you go. All right, um, do I have a moment to sneak in a, a question? Probably. Probably, okay. Um, someone was just wondering about why we use um, Atalanta and Hercules. Um, the two ROV system is so that um, Atalanta can take kind of the heave and, and the movement of the ship and um, Hercules can do the work that Hercules has got to do without um, the Not movement of 30. Roger. Go from there. the water above. And also really helpful for camera view for the pilots to, to see where things are at, see the 
I think that also helps. Anything else I'm missing, folks? No, those are the major ones. Yeah. Right on. And switching from blue light to red light is just because we are redecorating okay. the light in Pulse the control van today. Stop until another lambda. Roger. Roger. 30 meters to go. And Herc is priceless because there's been lots of changes and stuff. People are asking how much the ROV costs, but hard to say with all the improvements and changes. Yeah, we change the parts out all the time, so. Let's just go with priceless. It's an expensive hobby if you're looking to get into it. <laughs> yeah, and the ROVs are um, connected on the same, what do you call it? You call it the umbilical tether? What do you call it? I don't know. They're they're busy. We can get back to that question later. The six eight or the tether? Yeah, six eight is called is an umbilical, and then your tether is the little yellow one, basically that stretches between Atlanta and Herc. Cool. Thank you. stop the survey around now because I got to get back towards Atalanta to kind of keep coming down so sounds, sounds good. good all right hopeful wide thank you and for the folks asking about the tether line and such you can go into the nautiluslive.org and in the search bar just put telepresence and there's an educational resource, Telepresence Teaching Animation. And it gives you a really good idea of how um, the ROV setup works and how the communication and Come satellite. Again as you're coming closer now. How you're watching us right now. Check it Roger. out. Roger. Yeah, you'll be nice chasing slow. Argus for a bit because I think it was tugged out. Yeah. So just be following it for a while. Found it. There we go. Bottom nice. Of the that's the. Uh, that's, ex that's actually what we're going to be working on later. Which one's that? I think that's the auxiliary platform. Yeah, that checks out with our nav, so we're pretty dialed in then. Um, but we want to go to the IP, so still, yeah. still back up. Okay. And as folks are listening, IP. Where are we going? Uh, to back up to the IP. We're platform. just under Atlanta. I'm going to log on Kay. bottom over here, which is. For me to bring the auto head in and start bringing that a lot around to follow you, sure. or do you want to wait for a while? No, I'm good. You can start now. I think I'm close yeah. enough. I'm starting to turn around. Roger. How many cameras do we have on the ROV? All of them. Seven. <laughs> Seven on Hercules. Thank you. I do like Dave's answer. That though. looks like well. the IP. Uh, no, no, it does not. No. I take it back. That looks like our term can. This one inside? Yeah. It's 
It was designed to go that way. Oh, okay. Has a little handle on top. There's the IP. What are we doing, Adrian? What are we doing? Well, we're going to uh, sit down and take a heading. Inspection. Stand by. Ed, are we um, doing a... Yeah, if we could, that'd be great. Yeah, we can do that. Let's do, down lights do on. Yep, I'll go for that. Uh, okay. Are we doing white balance? Uh, yes, sir. Real quick. Oh, so Josh, that's what this is. That's an IP. What are you doing? <laughs> what you just did. Are you okay? <laughs> you're, you're like... We've got to do one of these. Hey, oh, Ed, yeah. one the of white, these. The white balance <laughs> arm motion. I did that? You just did. Okay. Blue uh, light's getting in your head. Uh, presets. <laughs> Is that blue? <laughs> <laughs> Red light's getting a Renny. Yeah. I have no idea what's happening. Right. <laughs> All right. This is where we check in on your mental health. Yeah. Kay. How's everyone doing? Check coming up. Measure. Pretty yeah, good. You know. Yeah. Good. Yep. Oh, there's that hose. Huh. Is that the dredge hose? Yep. Sure is. So, Ed's going to be. Would you I guess call we need this some downlights on? Calibrating? Uh, yeah, Ed? probably. Yeah. Yeah. Calibrating color balance for the video. Meh. Get off of there. Or, as Josh says, waves his arms yeah, super great. wildly yeah. in front of his face. Are we retracted? No. Do we need, should we be? What do you want, Ed? Uh, I can go either way, I just don't want to get poked in the eye. Yeah. How's that, Ed? Let's see. Oh, there you go. If anybody's in, uh, I think it's Sudbury, Ontario, I wouldn't mind swinging by DSC Labs and ask them to get us some better tape. We'll just replace it, it's been. Well, we want proper tape, a little bit better. All right, you guys know the drill. We're going to black balance the camera. It's going to take the camera black. It's intentional. This is going to last about seven and a half seconds, starting now. Is it always a different length of time, Ed? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still counting. 13 seconds. <laughs> White balancing now. That's an excellent white balance. Saving. And coming out. Thank you, pilots. That's great. Check check that one off. That is Anything an awesome white you. balance, too. Um, just one second. Uh, I will, when you come out of ROXY, once he's done there, okay, I'm going to do a reset. Up here, so. There you go. Okay. Okay, we're going to take a heading of this IP, and we're going to look for a nice landing spot for this broadband seismometer on our porch. Hydraulics are off. Copy. I think anywhere here looks good to me to put this thing down. Can you a bubble on the porch, please, Dave? You want a heading on the platform first? Yeah, sure. Okay. Are you okay to fly? I'm, well, You're not, I not too so. heavy? Uh, yeah, we're good. Oh, big jump in Iris. Um, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you're good with the leash. Bubble on the porch. Can't see. We cannot see. I hope so. Yeah. Super duper neutral. Now if you just want to grab the T-Boss and clean this whole IP. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is disgusting. Who's... There's not very many things I like more than using the T-Boss. I know, it does. Well, I, I'll, I'll be honest. It's uh, it's pretty enjoyable watching you use the T-Boss. Yeah. I okay. like when it's straight on and they're just using a wrist it's rotate exactly. to use it. Yeah. I, I have missed all T-Boss uh, action oh in this yeah. expedition. I, I mean, feel like I have not straight? lived is that straight? yet. Is that straight? What is our camera um, straight? Is that straight? straight I'm looking at bubble. Zeus like, camera. Yeah, you, can't, you can't really see the porch edge. Oh, yeah, we uh, don't know. Sure. That's straight. Right there. There. Yeah. 289. Two eight yeah. 283. Two eight two eight oh, 283. Two eight two eight and now we're looking for a spot, AJ. 
Where do you want me to go? Yeah, just back up a little, and it looks pretty good behind you. Yeah, there's beep, good. Beep, right here? Yeah. Beep. Okay. What's below me, though? Let's just back up a bit more. Because I don't want to sit Ooh, on that. Nope. Does yeah. it have to be right next to the IP, or right in there is good? No, no, anywhere, anywhere nearby. We just want to be able to find it again. Okay. And it's not going to sink into the sediment? No. Okay. Not for a few years. So now we're going to be super duper light. Data, I have a yeah. target there. Okay. Yep, I've got it. You can okay. get rid of it whenever. Good job, Josh. Really well done. Okay, Magnum first. Oh, oh. I think your 100% verts are going to keep us dusty. I think so too. shoulder up put more pressure on this what's going on so keep shouldering up and it'll be fine eventually how about elbow up say about the dust, uh, Rennie? You got 100% th thrust down. Do you need that? Sonardine business, strictly Sonardine business right now. No, I clicked the wrong button. It's going to take forever. It's the data telegrams. It's very annoying. It takes a long time. Oh, you're not on comms. Set this up. Do I try this? I'm, I'm done with that. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> Do you want to keep working on it? Do you want to close that? No, it's 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 a software thing. It's got to be a wrong command, opposite command. It's okay. That's what that's gonna do now. Okay. Never mind. We're we're okay without it for some time. So. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna rack in, but, and that's what we're doing. BBS off. BBS off. Um, watch the connector. Obviously, the handle does yes, sir. rotate, as you know, because you carried it earlier today. What's that? Well, the arm comes across nicely. 
to get the hand oh the handles on the connector side yeah but that's okay in the way. The who's. Yeah, yeah. A couple of hooses. Nicely done. Yeah, we're just placing it here temporarily so that we are not super heavy and can get into our toolbox for the rest of the dive. And how much does this seismometer weigh uh, in water? In water, it weighs 60 pounds. All right. Herc is doing a kettle bar, kettle ball workout. Wow, it was exactly two six six zero meters. The depth. Things that make data stewardship happy. Yeah. How that monkey's fist get? Felt like tuck, it got tucked behind. You can grab right in the center here and lift from that point. Could you remind me how tall the cork is? Uh, I'm not sure I have, I don't know where to find that information. A few meters? Yeah, so that would be my guess. Is it kind of a, like a mooring type thing or? No, it's not a mooring. No, it's a covered hole in it's the a, ground. Oh, okay. It's a big drill hole. Uh, okay. Can we mark this? Well, I mean, this is at the IP. We know where it is. It's south of the IP. Yeah, I'm yep. just and using, using that. Uh, sorry, why am I so lost here? It's east of, we're looking north. It's east of the IP. It's right here. Uh, da CBS. Okay. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to float up because neutral stick is floaty. Okay. What is our next step? Our it's next around, step? okay, yeah, the cork is around three meters high. Roger, thank you. Our next step is to go look for the deployed bead bags, although I'm wondering if we should take advantage of the opportunity to rearrange the CTD on our porch because we would probably want to put that bead bag in our toolbox. I don't think we want to put the bead bag in our toolbox. No? Okay. Full of stuff, including knives. Okay, sure. So let's just go look for it then and we'll use that open space on the porch. Okay. Roger. Uh, from Hercules, our best known target to it is 40 meters at 130. Let me get you that over here. Bead bags? 40 meters. Um, okay, so Dave, we're going to reset the, we're just going to try and fix something, and it's going to let me lose control, and I'm buoyant, so if I start coming up, just keep, come up with me. And I am ready, Trevor. 
There should be two in close proximity. I don't know if we'll Go see ahead, a launch. Pitch. Sonar. There's not much else out there. Yep, go ahead. You do what you got to do. Yeah, you're good. You can fly. Uh, yes, that's fine. Thank you. Okay, yeah. Dave, I should be able to come back down. Can you try the arm? Yeah, you go for it, Trevor.